Hey, Grants County, today we have a special treat. We are gathered with some of the brightest minds in the area, our seniors from the schools, and State's Attorney Lance Richardson. Today we're going to talk about Queens County Ghost Purple and the Good Samaritan Law. And we're joined by some of the students in Lance right now. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, Thank of course. You very much. I'm going to hand it off to you. Go ahead. Take awesome. it away. So, hi, I'm Campbell Parkhurst. And uh, to start us off, Mr. Richardson, I was wondering if you could give us a brief description of the, um, what you do as a state's attorney. Sure. As state's attorney, I'm an attorney, obviously. I represent the state of Maryland, but specifically for Queen Anne's County. So any crimes that are formally prosecuted in this county, uh, I present the evidence for the state against the accused and hold people accountable for crimes committed in Queen Anne's County. Uh, hey, Mr. Richardson. My name is Aiden Myers, and I was uh, wondering what exactly is the Good Samaritan Law? That's a good question, Aiden. It was created about four years ago, this law, and it was designed to prevent people who are suffering from overdose, medical emergencies, from alcohol or drugs. It grants them immunity from prosecution. The theory is that people were afraid to call for help because they would be subjected to criminal prosecution. This law protects people from prosecution and gets people to call 911 and seek emergency assistance so that we can avert tragedies and deaths which happen on a regular basis from opioid overdoses. Hi, my name is Reagan Gaspard and I'm a senior at Gunston. So this law, we have all of, uh, all of us here, we're going into our senior year, but not all of us are 18 yet. How does this law pertain to minors and what can it do for us? Minors who use alcohol and drugs are subject to prosecution in the, in the juvenile system. This law protects you from juvenile prosecution as well. I mean, often we have scenarios where minors, 14, 15, 16, use drugs and or alcohol, and oftentimes that they are the ones who are unfamiliar with these substances. They get alcohol poisoning and they can die if they don't get medical attention. And that's why we want you, young people, to call when someone's in medical distress. Um, we have hundreds of people, even in this county each year, saved from death by calling 911, administering Narcan, which saves them from a heroin overdose and, and saves lives. But alcohol kills young people as well. So before this, uh, we had some actual tragedies where people did not call for medical assistance. And I had a manslaughter case where a young man and woman were using heroin together. She did not call 911 when he became unconscious. He ultimately died she dumped his body in a church parking lot and she was tragically prosecuted for manslaughter and found guilty of that felony. So some people are not in favor of this law. Some people though think it's wonderful. Hi, my name is Kayla Flood and I'm a rising senior at Gunston. So could you get in trouble for not contacting the police or someone? That's a good question, Kayla, and you absolutely could because um, you can be charged with manslaughter for failing to provide medical assistance, especially if you provided the drugs. Um, I don't know what you guys think, whether, Campbell, you think this sounds like a good idea, or what do you think about this law? I'm in favor of it, um, because I think it definitely protects some uh, who are trying their best to be a good Samaritan, and I think it's in the best interest of, you know, the good of the people, and I think it helps uh, keep us not only in order, but keeps people out of jail who don't deserve to be there. Right. I agree with Campbell. I think that by having the law, you can also, sometimes it takes a very horrifying experience to kind of turn a life around. But maybe that person that went to the police and called the police, they'll also quit using alcohol, drugs, stuff like that, because they realized what it could do. Well, and certainly the guilt for not calling, if someone does die, they have to carry that with them, that they didn't seek uh, medical attention. But this law protects people from prosecution for possession of drugs, for furnishing or providing alcohol to underage people. It bars prosecution for any of those uh, crimes as long as uh, you call 911 and you seek medical attention for the person suffering. That's the whole theory and design of this law, to help others. So what are the exceptions? Who doesn't it? protect? Sometimes it will not protect the actual drug dealer who provided the drugs if he or she is still on scene. It protects those who use and who share the drugs. 
but sometimes the for-profit dealer may not be protected by the Good Samaritan law. And some other crimes, potentially assaults or other things that are collateral, may not be protected. But we're going to consider, as a prosecutor, I have great discretion when to give people leniency when they do the right thing. And if it's about saving lives, certainly we're going to consider that and how we fashion a prosecution, whether a person's going to get some leniency or consideration for doing the right thing. And that's what we want them to do. So I'm a senior and I'm about to go to college and there's a good chance that I won't wind up going to college in Maryland. Does this law apply in other states or is this just in Maryland? This is a specific Maryland law that applies anywhere in the state of Maryland. That's a good question. Every state has different laws and other states have similar laws, but not all states have a Good Samaritan law. We did not have one before 2016. So in the past, there were prosecutions for people calling 911. So wherever you go to school, it's always good, though, to know what the laws that may be in effect. Uh, I know my daughter went to Alabama her freshman year, and they gave an orientation about how a small quantity of marijuana was a felony in Alabama. Here in Maryland, it's uh, civil citation and decriminalized. So wherever you go to school, make sure you know what's applicable. But um, not too long ago, at Penn State University, they had a tragedy involving alcohol where no one called 911, a young man lost his life, and that's what this law is designed to prevent, that we don't have a tragedy at a college campus because someone didn't do the right thing. And I encourage all of you to step up if there ever is a situation with someone in distress. A lot of times the, the group mentality and the mindset is everyone's afraid to, to go against the group. But if you know someone's in trouble and someone's in need of medical attention, you do the right thing and you make the call and you look out for your friends. So could you give us an example of someone's life being saved with this law? Sure, we, it happens almost daily, believe it or not, in Queen Anne's County. 911 is dispatched. Our emergency medical responders will show up on scene for someone from a heroin overdose and they will administer Narcan, which reverses the effects of the heroin overdose and will revive the person and tragically, we'll see people sometimes, multiple times, being revived with Narcan. I say tragically because we need those people to go to rehab and get some help, and sometimes they do not. But yeah, this is a daily occurrence that families call 911 to save their loved ones. Now, you said this law was put in place in 2016, Correct. I believe. Were there any specific events leading up to that, uh, to the point where the law had to be implemented? The case I had was one example of many. We're just, the young lady was afraid to call 911 because she thought she would be charged with possession of heroin. And she might have been, but being charged with manslaughter is so much worse. That's a 10 year felony. A felony stays with you forever. You can't vote and many other things. So my case was one of many around the state that goes to the legislature in Annapolis, our lawmakers say, is this a good idea? Is this gonna benefit the public at large? And that's why they put it into effect. They hear actual anecdotal cases of where people died and they come up with laws that are gonna benefit everyone. And that's what brought this about. And this opioid addiction right now, this epidemic is worse than ever. This law is so important right now. We didn't really have heroin overdoses 10 years ago like we have the last few years. I have one quick question for you. Yes, sir. So what's it like to be able to have students come to you and want to ask these questions and be involved in the community? It's great. I appreciate uh, the interaction, their interest in the law. And fortunately, I don't get to meet good students like this on a regular basis. They don't get in the system, which I like, but I don't get to interact with them that often. So it's great to see our young students and they're about to go off to college after this year. Um, so it's great to interact with them and get to meet them. Right. And you guys just got free advice from an attorney. <laughs> Do you know how much this would cost for people to get this kind of time? <laughs> Let's well, hope they don't need to use it. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys, the students, for coming in. And I want to thank you, State's Attorney, for taking the time to talk with them. This has been great. You're welcome. Yeah. So if you want more information on Queen Anne's County Goes Purple, you can always go to qacgoespurple.org where you can sign up for more information or join the team because we're looking in September to expand. Go purple. Be a part of the community. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks to the state's attorney and to our students for joining us today. And we'll see you next time.
Mm-hmm.